Hello everyone! In this video I will show you how to create a tune shader in Shader Graph that actually receives shadows. I am using URP11 in this video, so if you are using a different version there might be some changes. A post with the written version of this tutorial, as well as all resources needed, are linked below in the description. Okay, let's make a tune shader. I'll be using these meshes. Right now they have the standard URP lit material. And we don't want that, so let's create a new shader graph. We use the lit shader graph. Open it up. So for this shader to receive shadows, we are going to need a custom function with a bit of code in it. There's no way around it. Um, I walk through the code, but if you don't want to write it, it will be linked in the description, so you can just copy and paste it. So create a custom function. Now you can see here that there's two types here, string and file. Now, if you have just a, a very short piece of code, the body here is fine. But as soon as it goes beyond the borders, it becomes a bit of a nightmare to use, so it's easier to just use a text file. Now, it's not possible to create a text file from Unity, so you're just going to have to um, go to the Explorer and create a text document here. I'll call it like boomshading.hlsl. And then it'll show up in Unity and you can just drag it to the source. Open up the text file. So now we have to write a bit of code, uh, starting with the function name. The underscore float is there to um, tell the node what precision to use. And then there are a bunch of values that will go into the node. And then some values which will be outputs. This is maybe a bit confusing, but we will need all these values as we go along, so hopefully it'll make sense uh, the further we are in. First we need to make sure that the two output values are set to something so that the preview of the nodes has something to work with. So if we are in shader graph preview, the outputs have some value. And then if we're actually in a scene, we gotta set it all properly. Else. First checking if we're using screen space shadows or not. And that's where the clip space position um, input will come in. And else we use the world position. Next up we grab the directional light. First up checking if uh, shadows are enabled, then we use the shadow coordinates. And otherwise uh, we don't need them. Next up we use a dot product that gives a nice fall off for the tune ramp using the normal inputs and the light direction. And then we half it and give it a little offset just so we can move the tune ramp over the whole mesh later on. If we'd output this dot product it would look like this. And now using a smooth step, we can create a cutoff effect over this dot product. So 
and this uses the tune ramp offset and tune ramp smoothness inputs from uh, the start of the function. So the tune ramp offset controls the cutoff and then tune ramp smoothness will uh, control how soft the transition of the tune ramp is. Now multiply the tune ramp with the shadow attenuation, which is the actual shadows cast by the main light. Now we can output our final tune ramp using the color of the main light, multiplying it with our tune ramp and adding in some tune ramp tinting, which is the final input we were still missing. And we also need to output the light direction, which we will use later. And that's all the code. Um, I hope it made sense. If it didn't, don't worry. It is linked down below in the description, as I said before. No more code now. <laughs> to make it work in the graph, we need to name our function here, which was tune shading. And now it's going to complain because we haven't set up our outputs and inputs yet. I'll give them the same names and the same variable types as in the code. And that was the inputs. Now do the same for the outputs. Oh, I forgot to end the file with a end if. If you copied the code, you wouldn't have gotten that. But if you were following along, don't forget to end the if def with an end if. And I put a period instead of a comma there. You probably already got that. Well, whoops, these things happen, I guess. And now it's no longer showing magenta. So. Unity is happy. We can now start linking in the inputs with a normal node, a position node set to object, which is already in clip space, another position node set to world, and then there are two sliders for the tune ramp smoothness, the offset. And there's a color for tinting. And these three should be converted to properties so we can uh, use them in the material settings. can finally see something on the models. Take the tune ramp output and drag it into emission. Now maybe turn down the smoothness and ambient occlusion. We don't need it. Save and back to our scene. Let's set these two materials to use our new shader. And there we go, that's the basic tune shading done. The tinting is set to black right now, so if we turn that up a bit, it looks a bit nicer. And with the offset, we can change the position of the tune ramp. And the softness. And you can see that it's actually casting and receiving shadows. It's looking a bit bland now, so let's add in some textures. Starting off with a sample texture 2D. 
and a texture 2D asset. And we want to expose this one. So convert it to a property. And then multiply it with the tune ramp output. And then we plug that into the emission slot. So now set up your textures. And you can see there's still some kind of lighting happening here, which we don't want. So we go to the tune shader, you can see that the base color is set to gray. Let's set that to black because we don't need it. And that's a more toony result, so that's good. It's looking pretty good already, but I think we should add a rim light to it now. So we're going to use a Prunel effect. And let's create a new float to control the rim power. Let's set this to something a bit higher for the preview. Now I like my rim light to be depending on the uh, light direction, so I'm going to take the direction output and create a dot product with the light direction and the normals, just like inside of the custom function, only this time without the offsets. So connect the normal vector and multiply the dot product with the Fresnel effect. And you can see in the preview that it's only on one side. Now we take this and create a cutoff using a step node. I set it to 0 0.5, but you could also make this into another exposed float if you want. Now I'm going to multiply this with the texture result. So our rim light has color. And then finally multiply it with a float to control the brightness. Now we add this to the main texture. And save. And the brightness is set to zero, so it's not going to show up. But if we tweak the values a little bit, you can see the rim appear and it moves with the light direction. Now we are almost done. I just want to add one more thing. And that's the option to have parts of the texture uh, unlit. Parts like the eyes here, I want them to always be glowing. And there's probably other models where you always want parts uh, to have no shadows. And we will do this with a mask texture that has red in the places where we want uh, things to glow. So go back to the shader graph and create a texture 2D asset, uh, which will hold our mask, convert it to a property. And right now it's defaulting to a white texture, which means that the whole thing will glow if we don't assign this. So set this to be black by default and create a sampler for it. And then only grab the red channel here and multiply it with the main texture. And then finally add this in right before uh, we plug it into emission. Now we're only using the red channel here. So you still have uh, green and blue and alpha or any other effects like uh, specular or some kind of overlay texture or whatever. We're not going to do that in this video. So save and go back. And then assign a mask texture if you have one. As you can see now the eyes are unlit so they're always visible. Even if the shadow's over them. And that's it, the completed lit tune shader. The resources are linked in the description. 
and thanks for watching. These tutorials are made possible by my amazing patrons and you can find a big list of all tutorials covering topics like shaders, gameplay, box modeling, textures and colors on my github page linked below.